Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to remind you about jointhefoot.com. That is the place, the one place you can go. Help support the show. On top of that, you get a whole bunch of extra fantasy footballers goodie. We're talking an extra podcast every single week. We're talking access to these exclusive Foot Clan community forums, our premium resources, including flex rankings, Every single week, all kinds of very cool fantasy footballers things over at jointhefoot.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from the Playdraft Studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome into the podcast. Woo! Monday Night Football's over. Monday Night Football happened. Oh, man, that was so exciting. I really loved it when it was two to three. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Brooks. Hey, Brooks. Have we ever started the show with breaking news? Oh, 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 hold on. Hold on. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Breaking news. Saints trade Adrian Peterson. To the Arizona Cardinals. What? Oh for my a goodness! Pick. Oh my what? goodness! <laughs> what? Andy has yeah. been talking about this for since the beginning of the season. Yeah, saying why? Like it's right there. Oh, oh what? man! Holy moly! Well, oh welcome to the show, everybody. Instant analysis says Chris Johnson will be <laughs> removed from the team. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> well. I'm, Brooks, I'm all thrown off. I don't even know how to do this podcast how anymore. How dare you, Brooks? Anyways, we'll start it from the top. All right, let's do that. <laughs> We're starting way over. Kidding. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I am Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? To my side, Jason Moore, he has not abandoned me. No. Like no. our comrade Andy Holloway, who's enjoying a nice vacation. Yeah, dad is away, so that's why the beginnings of these shows are going to be a little crazier, a little spicier. That was insane. I, I love it. This is the best intro to a show that's ever happened. <laughs> you can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow Jason at Jason FFL, and I am at FF Hitman. You can find all of our articles. I mean, big shout out. Big shout out to the writing staff for the Fantasy Footballers. Find all that work at thefantasyfootballers.com. We're talking an injury recap, a defense recap, waiver wire. I mean, these, these guys, these fellas over there. They're doing excellent work. I highly suggest you go and check it out. The quick question of the day is simply a Monday night football recap. There was a lot of storylines Oh yeah, from last night's game. Sam Bradford went out and did his best weekend at Bernie's impression <laughs> yeah. for, for about the first half. I was going to say, it wasn't that good. You could tell he was dead. I mean, that was that, that guy's knee. I was I was saying this yesterday at lunch. It, was, it it just seemed like the type of injury when he when he when you took this long where he was going to come out play a half and get pulled. It, it gives me no confidence in his ability rest of season. Like you know it, he's going to need to be back and look good for a game before I will then think about streaming or starting him. Which means if you wait another two weeks and then he comes back and he looks okay but still is off, you're still waiting. I mean, you're – You know who can be back in two weeks? Teddy oh, Bridgewater. No. no. Yes, he can. Well, you're you're just saying because of IR rules? Pup. He wasn't IR. He was put on the pup. <sighs> Have there been reports that he's actually I ready for that? Because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen anything yet, but I'm just throwing the name out there that if they're relying on Case Keenum in Minnesota – who knows? Who in the next couple of weeks? Who knows? Because Sam Bradford looks like he's in trouble. I mean, like you're talking in, injury trouble for the foreseeable future. Stephon Diggs exited the game with a groin injury, uh, not before giving you one reception for four yards. He did return uh, very, very late in the game. Didn't do ah! anything once he was oh, my groin. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, rough. Yeah, a rough outing for him. And I, I think you're going to have you know a mixed bag. Going forward, if Case Keenum is your quarterback, you'll you'll have those good matchups where he's fine and has has a great game. But you don't have a quarterback that is going to be able to turn Stefan Diggs into, you know, that that guy that's the, the just, leader at the yardage, at the league leader in wide receiver yards. Yes, I don't think you're going to have him be someone that is completely 
and utterly matchup proof if Case Keenum is the quarterback. The bump went to Kyle Rudolph, who Case Keenum came in and heavily targeted. Rudolph had himself a fine game. And speaking of fine games, Jason, Jarek McKinnon oh. had an excellent fantasy game. Yes, he did. He he looked uh, far better than he has looked in the past. I will I will give him that. I still say that you know if if you look at what he did, ninety five yards on the ground, that's great. Fifty eight of those came on a play that was the the defense was completely broken. Yes. like literally the main guy had his back to to the team and they snapped the ball early. And he ran for 58 yards. Uh, but six for 51 through the air? That's what I was going to bring up. Is His work in the passing game is what makes me go, okay, he is the guy to have in that backfield. Because I'm not fully convinced, despite the fact that he, he as, as the game progressed, and especially at the end of the game, he became, you know, the guy. They were giving him, the, you know, first and second down work. I, I'm not convinced that that's going to be his role going forward. It didn't seem like his role in the beginning of the game, and I think they were just using the hot hand. But he's clearly going to be involved in the passing game. Those help with game script. And, and so, yeah, we'll we'll talk about McKinnon as a, as a pickup on the waiver wire segment. And the big debut for the Chicago Bears, <laughs> Mitch Trubisky. Mitchell Trubisky came out. He looked fantastic in that first quarter. I mean – hitting guys in the hands look his athleticism I mean, his mobility was incredible I mean he just he moves at a very very quick pace looked fantastic to start things really fell apart after that and as I'm watching a, a, a like a, a very strong start from Mitch Trubisky I was reminded of Tony Romo was in, in one of the games he was announcing for the Bengals yeah, it was the Bengals. The Bengals versus Green Bay. Yep. And they said, and Andy Dalton was looking okay, and things were going well. And then Tony Roma said, okay, now that they're out of their pre-scripted 20 games, let's see how they do. 20 plays. Right. Yeah, 20 plays. And then Green Bay shut them down. So you're and saying these, that maybe Mitch looked great for those scripted plays that they had right. practiced all week, but then once they got out of that and into the wild, yes. he fell apart. Yes, and, and I mean, the stats – he he was he was quite bad in the second half his touchdown pass was it was pretty lucky there uh for Zach Miller yeah i was going to say he had the two he only had two passes the entire game that i thought were were bad passes one was the pass at the end that was an interception the other was the touchdown right that should have been intercepted but was popped up into the air and then caught uh, for a touchdown. Now, he's dealing with a very, very poor wide receiver core in Chicago. That is really his main issue. There's just – I don't think you can have hardly any quarterback come in and make Kendall Wright and Marcus Wheaton relevant. <laughs> sure. And it, on top of that, the uh, the refs were not being very kind to the Chicago no, Bears. They got hosed. I, I feel so bad for Chicago fans. I mean that that call back on the the holding call for uh, Jordan Howard's touchdown. See, I I thought it was a hold. I thought really? he yeah. I mean, it was the critical block that freed Jordan Howard to get the edge, and he he did pull him. Now it's that happens a lot in football and does not get called. But it just it looked like if the ref was right in front of that, I probably would have called it too. But there was plenty of calls in the game where I did feel like they were getting hosed. Still. I saw at least the the glimpse, the glimmer from Trubisky that I don't think he fell on his face, despite the numbers indicating he really fell on his face. I thought that there's enough there. Yeah, I completely there's enough, agree. There should be hope. There should be hope in Chicago. Uh, is, do you have any more takeaways from the game? Uh, n not really. The only the only takeaways uh, worth mentioning are that he did target the tight end. A lot of them went to Deion Sims, not just to Zach Miller, but it does give me confidence in Zach Miller going forward, given the landscape of, of tight ends. And uh, Tariq Cohen, uh, they, they utilized him well. They got him the touches, but he looked like he was trying to do too much on every single play. He wanted to try to break something long, and he was dancing but around. But he wasn't getting targets. I mean, you have one target. Well, he was – yeah, one one target, but he was getting carries at the end of the game. Yes. Obviously it, also used that's on every Cohen's, special teams. Cohen's real value came because he was getting these out-of-control target numbers from Mike Glennon, and now you have Benny Cunningham coming in and getting 
you know, Cunningham had four targets. I mean, he led the running backs. So do you have? Are you? But well, one of those targets was uh, from a from a punter, <laughs> which was <laughs> their best play of the <laughs> year. Touche. What happened to John Fox? I mean, he was he was slowly just like a full Kafka metamorphosis into the new John or into the new Jeff Fisher. That's yeah. who he was going to be. And then he came out and said, no, I'm going to do a run. I'm going to do a fake punt. Yeah, fake but you punt. know, you know what? Jeff too- Fisher did, did a lot of fake punts as oh, well. That's so a good point. That was the one thing you could rely but on. But And then a two-point conversion? Yeah. That was a college play. Oh, that play was amazing. All, all right. right. All right, all right. We're, we're going to move into the news and notes. News and notes from around the league. The Arizona Cardinals have <laughs> traded for Adrian <laughs> Peterson. Uh, it, yeah, immediate analysis without really diving deep. It doesn't change anything for me for the Saints because I was already seeing Adrian Peterson as irrelevant. Someone that's going to come in and get the ball two or three times. He was not used uh, recently, doesn't fit their scheme. So it doesn't really change anything there. The question is, does Adrian Peterson have value behind the Arizona offensive line they can't open any holes. You know, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, Paul Perkins looked terrible, but, you know, Wayne Gallman looked better right. and, and was a little bit relevant, but still not good enough behind that offensive line where it's like, okay, now I've got a running back. So what do you do with Adrian Peterson? But here's the thing. If they're giving Chris Johnson 10 carries or so a game, Adrian Peterson is the ki- the type of player you have to give him right. ten plus touches, and that's when good things start to happen. I mean, you can have uh, look at the game script for Kareem Hunt this past uh, this past Sunday night. It yeah, was, it was tough sledding to start, but when you commit to a running back like that, you wear defenses down. I believe it was Marshawn Lynch eloquently said you over you, and you over run into and over. an expletive's face over and over and over and over and over and, and over and over and over like, that's when the running game actually works so who knows i mean if if if, if they do toss chris johnson to the waiver wire which he that's it's done for chris johnson they chris johnson had a great career but i think it's over adrian peterson if you're going to give him 10 to 15 carries a game something could happen. It, it, this it's better than what was happening for him in New Orleans. Yeah, you you definitely want to pick him up off the off chance that he has you know a a, a really good game. Tampa Bay does not have a healthy defense right now. This is going to be a, a home game. So if he comes out this week, Brooks, can you get me his ownership percentage, please? Yeah, if if he comes out this week and has well, a well, good I mean, that's game, a, that's a quick week. That'd be a quick turnaround to get him featured. Yeah, I I wouldn't doubt it though. I mean, he's he's if Adrian he, Peterson. 37 percent really yeah okay so adrian peterson becomes yeah i would a pick very him up, interesting pick and if up. he has a really good week i would immediately trade him <laughs> sure. i mean no, i just would this is a this is a, a winnable matchup andrew luck will not play in week six Derek carr is expected to play we will see yeah i'll believe that yeah we'll we'll see julio jones is expected to play he was in week six he was back at practice i've got a question with julio jones i saw this on twitter i know my answer but i thought it was a really interesting question uh they were the question was should they trade their jordy nelson for julio jones oh okay just a trade question you know if you've got if you've got jordy would you rather have julio would you rather have julio (sighs) i think Man, I mean, it's it's a tough question because that is a very dealing with a couple. Julio is past the bye week. That was my that was my big. So you get an extra game. Yeah, when when the question was asked, it all came down to whether or not he's gonna play this week, and it looks like he is now. If that's the case, I would I would rather have Julio because you skip that bye, and you got to keep in mind Jordy had the hamstring issue that that took him out of the second half of that game or the fourth quarter. So I there you go. Yeah, it's it's very close. Those guys were actually very close to me in season long rankings. They were in the same tier. So that's a tough call. Blah Powell, he he uh, injured his calf during the during last week's game, and there's been a report that Elijah McGuire will see a heavy workload against the New England Patriots. Are you buying into that? Uh, one hundred percent, I'm buying into that. I don't think they have a choice. They're not going to have Matt Forte. They're not going to have Blah Powell. So Elijah McGuire will be. 
the main guy. They'll they'll you know is bring he some... start worthy? Yes, I would okay. I, I would say he's start worthy. Titans coach Mike Malarkey said on Monday that Marcus Mariota could be a game time decision in Week Six. So fantasy owners, good luck. Good yeah. luck with that. The old GTD, which is the absolute worst. The Lions are optimistic that optimistic that Matthew Stafford will play. You saw him hobbling around. I would expect him to play. Do you have any reason to doubt Stafford? No, no, Stafford will play. Bills coach Sean McDermott Char- said Charles Clay, ugh, he underwent knee surgery. It was a scope. He's expected to miss multiple weeks. Should be back, but Mr. Necessary has now paved the way for Mr. Very Necessary. <laughs> yes, Nick we will, O'Leary. <laughs> we will talk about it in the waiver wire. George, speaking of Jordy Nelson, he says he's fine after missing the final drive. So we, Jordan, yeah, I, I mean, straight from the source, he says he's fine. Everyone's fine until their hamstring is is <laughs> is not is <laughs> not fine. I mean, the thing is, is they were smart with what they did with him, resting him. You know, he kept his helmet on. I think he could have come back if if he had to, but they realize how valuable Jordy is, and I think they're going to rest him this week. He should really, truly be fine, but. With a hamstring issue, you know, you, you just can't control that. that. You could do all the stretching in the world, but if your hamstring is aggravated, it's very easy to re-aggravate, and if he pulls it and ends up missing a game or two, you, you know, you can't be shocked. you got to pay attention to hamstrings. News out of New York for the New York football giants. Oh, It is grim. So we had Odo Beckham. We already knew he was getting ankle surgery out for the season. Now things have escalated for Brandon Marshall, who will undergo season-ending surgery. Season? Season. Season? Oh, yeah, as in career? You yeah. think this is a wrap for Brandon Marshall? Yeah, I think – I mean, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want to go out like that. Did he sign a two-year contract? It was a two-year, yes. So maybe he'll be back next year, but the, it could be a career-ending Yeah, it injury. wouldn't shock me if this is it for Brandon Marshall. I, I think you're on to it. And they also lost Dwayne Harris, so – Sterling Shepard. <laughs> I mean, here's the reality. I, I, I said last week, or last week, I said yesterday that I don't want anything to do with basically any New York Giants right now, as depleted as their weapons on offense just became, and how bad their offensive line is, and their upcoming schedule for the next two weeks. Just horrible all the way around. But Sterling Shepard is a, is a must-grab now at this yes. point, because he is the wide receiver one rest of season and he is a talented wide receiver so while I I don't love his upcoming two matchups and I probably won't play him these next two weeks over the course there's still a lot of season left in fantasy football and you're going to get a lot of value out of Sterling Shepard this year the Browns have declined to name their starter are you expecting it to be Kevin Hogan or Deshaun Kaiser? Kevin Hogan if you that's what I expect yeah, as well. you you look at at how they're talking about Kaiser and they're being like, well, you know, if we decide to sit him, it's going to be good for him. Uh, you know, it, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're so well, you're just you're preparing Kaiser and everybody for him to sit. But we, we, we you know, we haven't made a decision yet. But uh, listen, if we if 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 he's the backup, that's really good for him. Now, I don't know what we're going to do, <laughs> but it would be so great if he was the backup. <laughs> but I have no promises. Sure. The, Vi- the Vikings did release Stephen Ridley. Uh, it was to make way for Michael Floyd. Michael Floyd, who caught a pass. He got Well, he got on the field because Stephon Diggs missed a whole bunch of the game. And the Bucks. we had an old yeller, old yeller situation. They've released Nick Folk. <laughs> they have signed Kicker. Patrick Murray. So adjust your fantasy rosters. Yeah, if you have a Tampa Bay kicker adjust your fantasy roster even if it is actually Patrick Murray because he will now stink the Tampa Bay kicker they're by cursed. rule there's it, there is, is not a, allowed to there is a poltergeist for sure I mean down I, there in Tampa Bay I'll tell you what if I was a kicker and like I'm on the streets <laughs> and I need a job and Tampa Bay is like hey how about me I'm, oh, I'm good man I'm good uh, Safeway also offered me a job <laughs> at my local grocery store so I think I'm gonna take that Bloody Mary will not <laughs> have anything to do with me if I'm working at Safeway. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, we're going to get into the waiver wires. Before that, want to thank HelloFresh, great sponsor of the show. They are on a mission to save home cooking. I love cooking. I, I enjoy spending time with the wife making meals. What HelloFresh does is they offer 
a, a basically a meal plan delivery service where you're going to get the recipe, you're going to get the measured amounts so there's no waste. You're going to get everything really fresh. It's it's a meal kit delivery service and they're going to make cooking more fun because it takes out all of the annoying parts of cooking but allows you to make nice fresh meals at home. They they offer different uh, options, a classic box, a veggie box, a family box. You choose. They've got two full-time registered dietitians who review each recipe to ensure it's nutritionally balanced. And for $30 off for your first week of deliveries, you can visit HelloFresh.com and enter footballers30 when you subscribe. So go to HelloFresh.com, enter footballers30 30 to save $30 off your first week of deliveries. I want to thank our studio sponsor, Draft. Ha ha. Look, this is the place that you want to you want to dabble the feet into some DFS over the weekend. Up the ante. I mean, make things more fun this weekend and the best way to do that is you jump on Draft, you download the Draft app. You get in these it's it's a snake draft. You are you, you already, already know, know how to play. How to play. You do a one week draft. We do we do it on the show every single Friday. Speaking of that, Jason, mm, 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 you're gonna pay the piper this week because I took yeah. you down. Yeah, I I lost this last quarterback challenge. And but you you've seen it, you've or you've heard it on the show. Just how easy and how fun it is to play on draft with that 30 second timer when you are in crunch time, and just like I said, enhance the weekend. And draft takes care of their of their players. Right, oh, we've, we've talked time. about they, this. That it, if there's like the crazy bad beats of the week, that it seems like once a week right now they're rolling out something where they say, "Hey, if you lost this type of a one of those, you know, gut wrenching, uh, like a couple defeats, weeks ago, you know, the Josh Doxson drop touchdown, they said if you missed a prize by less than four points and you had Kirk Cousins, your entry fee was refunded because they take care of their players." And, and listen to this. They for new players, there is a money back guarantee on your first game up to a hundred bucks because they know that you will enjoy it. They take care of you. Draft.com slash ballers. That is draft.com slash ballers. You ready for the waiver wire, Jay? Put me in, coach. <laughs> Put me in, coach. All right, we're going to start it off with some wide receivers. These are guys that they are probably owned. We know that their ownership is higher. These first guys we're going to talk about. But, but they could be there. You you need to make sure you just yes. take a look. Take always, a look always take a little peek. Uh, first first up, Sterling Shepard. Just mention him. Make sure he is not available in your league. He's he's you know owned in 63% of leagues, but take a look. Danny Amendola, same ownership percentage. I mean, he's just too important to that offense, if he's out there, to, to not be picked up and played. And the number one wide receiver. For the Carolina Panthers. Oh, is that official? That is official. Devin Funches. Would you rather have Devin Funches or Kelvin Benjamin? I would rather have Kelvin Benjamin. I would rather have Devin Funches. Rest of the season water bet? <gasps> Ooh, oh, but I don't know where the button is for that. Well, then we can't do it. Oh, does that, that means it's not official? No, it's not official if we don't have a button. Oh, it's official! <laughs> water bet. Put it on the board, Brooks. All right, so we'll get into the main pickups. John Brown, smoke. He showed up a little bit. I mean, he caught a touchdown, so he had an okay fantasy day. The good news for John Brown was he outsnapped Jerron Brown. He outsnapped J.J. Nelson. They had eased him in for one game, and then they went full, near full snaps for John Brown. He is widely available. He gets to take on Tampa Bay and then the Rams. I mean, these – Two juicy matchups. Yeah, I mean for he John is, Brown. John Brown is beyond the best wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals right now. I mean, uh, you know, no disrespect to Larry Fitzgerald, uh, but when John Brown, the, the most versatile, yeah, because yeah. he he can actually go deep and he can play those short intermediate routes while Fitz is yeah for fantasy purposes relegated for, for Bruce Arians' system. You have to have that speedy receiver that can go long. And they just haven't had that without John without John Brown. If he is truly healthy, and you know he seems to be, I I, I can't bank on him for the rest of season to not right. get re injured again because of his sickle cell trait. But while he's out there, you yeah, pick him up and start him. Mike Wallace has shown up now for two straight weeks. It was Are only you picking him up. It was only three targets. I think if I am 
desperate I may. And we're talking – I'm not spending hardly any fab on Mike Wallace. I'm, I'm putting a, a $1 or a $2 bid if I need to add a wide receiver. Yeah, I mean I, – Even still you're passing. I mean, Joe Flacco I'm not, I, looked if, better the last couple of weeks. He has, and, and, and that's worth noting. The Ravens offense – you know, I would – much rather have still. I would much rather have Jeremy Macklin. Jeremy Macklin is not in our waiver wire show, Jay. Well, he is you now. Can't if, pick him up if if Jeremy Macklin is out there. Uh, pick him up. But go the, the go point to is, the owner of Jeremy Macklin and say, Jason from the fantasy football said I can pick him up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So so pick him. So please give him drop some, him. Just give him to me. Um, I, I'm not super excited about either guy because of the offense, but the offense is getting better. The problem with Mike Wallace is yes. This is two weeks in a row where he's had over 100 yards. Big plays. But it's three targets. Yeah. I mean, you just can't rely on three targets with that offense. Ricardo Lewis from the Cleveland Browns. I'll repeat that name because maybe you've never even heard that name. Ricardo Lewis, 5 for 71 on eight targets. Now, we kind of we, – we played this – Yeah, or we played this game. We played this game with Rashad Higgins. I Yes, that's, that is very true. But yeah, Ricardo Lewis has been getting involved. There were all those reports during the offseason from Cleveland beat reporters saying there is a slim chance that Ricardo Lewis passes Corey Coleman on the depth chart. So the, the team likes him. Yeah, he didn't, by the way. I, yes. I'm just saying. He, yes. he never got it done. He, but Corey Coleman is – he has – actually, uh, he has passed Corey Coleman on the depth chart right now. Uh, I would I would I would prefer to say Corey Coleman has taken himself off the tomato depth chart. tomato <laughs> potato potato. <laughs> um, listen, uh, you can chase Ricardo Lewis if you want, but here's why I'm not going to chase Ricardo Lewis. One is because it's the Cleveland Browns. Okay, that's that's, that's a strong that's, point. That's the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, that was the entire argument. Is it Deshaun Kaiser or is it Kevin Hogan? <clears throat> Hogan? It doesn't matter. <laughs> You went because, the rock on because it, of Rowan. because of uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's the. I mean, it's just. Will he have a couple more good games? Yes. C could it be this week? Sure. I'm not chasing the Cleveland Browns' number one wide receiver. All right. As a rule, right. um, here's the guy that I would that that I think I would be targeting, depending on whether you're looking this week or long term. Um, if I'm looking this week, I really like Taylor Gabriel. Yes. Taylor Gabriel, he was goosed last time, he not last week because they were on bye, but he had five targets. And the week before that, he had a monster game. Muhammad Sanu is going to miss a few weeks. Exactly. With Sanu out, coming off a bye, playing Miami at home, Taylor Gabriel is available in the vast majority of leagues, and he could end up being one of those starts where you start him and he ends up with 100 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, he's a great spot start this week. Roger Lewis from the New York Giants – he has elevated himself into a starting role. Again, I would say Brandon Marshall and Odell Beckham had de elevated themselves. And again, themselves. I will say tomato, tomato. All right. Yeah, half cup is half full. Yeah. For Roger Lewis. Any can interest? You, can you trust Roger Lewis? Do you think like I know the I know that the next couple weeks are 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 really tough. I mean, again, just since we were talking Sterling Shepard. This week, it's at Denver, which is the worst Oof. you could have. No, thank you. Then, oh, good, they come home. Oh, wait, it's the Seattle Seahawks. Well, that That's no good. And then it's a bye week. So the next three weeks. So pick Roger Lewis up in three to four weeks is what you're saying. In four in weeks. Four weeks. <laughs> uh, maybe. Um, right. And then Juju Smith-Schuster, he has shown, I know Big Ben, uh, you know, failed. Yeah. But he has been the guy who has uh, ha been heavily targeted. Playing all the snaps, Eli Rogers is out of the way. I think Juju Smith-Schuster has both the talent and the role to be fantasy relevant here. I mean, they 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 played Jacksonville, which is one of the most difficult matchups. Um, I would pick up, I would pick up some Juju. Can I interest you in a wide receiver from the Jets, either Jermaine Curse or Robbie Anderson, going up against the New England Patriots? Uh, going up against the New England Patriots is always a good thing right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if, I had, to take like one of no. them, if I had to take one of them, I would take Jermaine Curse. They are a startable asset, much more so than a Roger Lewis or even a Ricardo Lewis for me. Sure. All right, moving into the meat, the running back position. These guys are probably owned, but you need to check and find out if they are there. Buck Allen, sub 60%, had another big game. 
They have to use, once again, Baltimore begrudgingly has to use Buck Allen. We need an update on Terrence West. Terrence West injury. is out for several weeks. Is that what that's yes. the update? Yes, they actually signed Bobby Rainey. Uh, Terrence West is is done. So the, the Buck Allen yeah. and Alex Collins. You just got to check. I know we've we've said their names in the last couple of weeks, so you probably already have them if they were available in your league. But double check and pick them up if they're still out there. Same with, I mean, Aaron Jones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is so upsetting. Oh, America. <laughs> our league of record. So one of our top hold 10 on, hold on. tips. Yes. On the fantasy footballers, we have tips and tricks that we try to give you to help you win at your league. and Well, one of those tips is to... Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. To check the drops every day. Every day. you e got to do it every day, not just waiver day. Not just waiver day. You never know who gets dropped. And in our league of record, Aaron Jones this past week, after he was picked up for a lot of fab, was inexplicably dropped. Uh, and none of us saw it. No, we did not. And then he got picked up for zero dollars in our league because one person saw it. We failed. Yeah, we failed. We failed. So, Don't fail like uh, like we did this week. Yeah. Look for Aaron Jones. Um, coming off a of bye, Alvin Kamara. And the Rob Rob Kelly is only owned in 50% of leagues. I mean, that, this is absolutely that's ridiculous. Insanity. The starting running back for Washington. Now, now that being said, he didn't practice Monday. This is a new injury with his ankle. So I'll throw Samaje Pirine in there too. Sure. Both of those guys need to be owned, need to be picked up. Samaje could be a great start this week if Rob Kelly is out. All right, moving into the main waiver wire pickups for running back. We already talked about Adrian Peterson, and we briefly touched on Elijah McGuire. But Elijah McGuire. Are should... you are you going to drop Fab? Or like, are yes. you, you going to Fab explode yes, on I would, Elijah? I, I would spend $10 of Fab on okay. Elijah McGuire. I think you're going to have a multiple week rental. Uh, you know, he's who could turn into a full season. I mean, because this is a team, despite the fact that. Are, are they on a three game winning streak? They are. The yeah. New York Jets. I believe that they are leading <laughs> the division. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Oops. What, what is this Oops. world? I uh, maybe they're not playing for the future. Their future is now. Or what if they were just doing everything wrong when they were actually trying to win, and now they're trying to lose. And all they know how to do is do things wrong, and so they're winning. This is it's we're a on crazy to world. But, we need a thesis. Uh, here. But Elijah McGuire, he's looked good. He's got more and more involved, and now he has the opportunity to be the pretty much every down back. I, I think you do spend money on that. You pick him up and. Um, you know, hope for the best. Wayne Gallman looks like he should be the starting running back for the Giants. The matchups are tough. Brutal. Yeah, brutal, really. But he's getting the work and the five receptions. I would make a $0 bid on Wayne Gallman because he is worth picking up. Mm, but see, I would not, put a few dollars on him. See, at I'm, least. I'm, just, I'm not going to play him. These next two weeks and then a buy, that's where it's like if no one's going to pick him up, I'll pick him up for free. But I feel like he could be a landmine. One of those guys you pick up and you go, oh, okay, I, I should be able to start him. He's a starter, and then he craps your team. Marlon Mack. That's the guy. Jason's would... rising star this week. He's he's available in nearly all leagues. And now we have Chuck Pagano saying, I think it would be wise to try and find more ways to get him touches. Yeah, he's really good. I think he's going to move up uh, you know, ahead of Robert Turbin. He's going to be involved in the passing game. And when Andrew Luck gets back, which obviously is not this week, it will probably be end of October or the first week in November, uh, Marlon Mack is then going to transform from being a really good player in a bad situation to a really good player in a pretty good situation on a great offense. And he's at the bottom of, of the list just because he was a Monday night game or Monday night player. But Jarek McKinnon, I think, is the number one running back pickup this week. Would you di agree or disagree? Um. Yeah, I guess I would agree. I mean, you you you've got you saw him utilized in the passing game in a way that says he'll be able to stick. And you know, it the his his situation isn't changing. <laughs> this for the rest you of so the, much. It does. I just I don't like. Oh, Jarek I, I mentioned to you that I have a comp oh, for yeah. Jarek McKinnon that I think it's not perfect. There's a little. There's some discrepancies, but Jarek McKinnon is to you as Melvin Gordon is to me no yes no yes. ridiculous athletic give you either huge splash plays or give you nothing heavily involved in the passing game 
Now, Gordon has less competition, theoretically, unless the, the Vikings no. decide to bury Latavius Murray. But you just – No. Yep. No. Yep. We see them the same way. Here's the difference. Here's, here's the big difference. With unbelievable amounts of opportunity, we've now seen Jarek McKinnon get it done once. We've no, no. We've we he had basically uh, three quarters of a year with a terrible offensive line, and it was really bad. Melvin Gordon's rookie year, tons of opportunity, really bad. Sophomore year turned it on. Ugh, all right, pick him up. <laughs> what are, what are you spending on Jarek McKinnon? A lot. Are you really? Yeah, uh, he's the starting running back who is also a pass catching running. back. Are you back. talking like twenty twenty five? Yes, at least. At this point in the season, you got to get a running back. I would pick up Jerick McKinnon. Man, I'm going to put in a zero dollar bid just because I hate him. And, and America, I am not a McKinnon truther. I am not part of that group who has propped him up for years and years. But the it, the opportunities there, the offense is good. They have they have great pass catchers, and the offensive line is much better than it was last year. You, I think you have to pick him up. Yeah, no, you're right. And, it, it, you know, we want people to succeed. I think you do pick <laughs> despite up. Despite our McKinnon. own grudges? Yeah, I mean, despite our own grudges. We, you know, sometimes we're wrong. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm holding out. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting a couple more weeks to see if I'm wrong on McKinnon. Uh, no apologies here yet. Uh, you it's, know, deeper, deeper options. Uh, <laughs> if you want to look at um, Shane Vereen, we sure. talked about the terrible – nature of the Giants schedule and their all their weapons are gone but their weapons being gone is actually why Shane Vereen who has been utilized so well in the passing game think about week one Odell Beckham wasn't there he had nine receptions now Odell Beckham's gone Brandon Marshall's gone they're going to use Shane Vereen in the passing game he'll probably end up with 10 receptions for like five yards but yeah if you're in a PPR, <laughs> you pick get, them up. You get and points. Foot Clan, we are going into week six. That means it is time uh, that you can start adding those handcuffs. So make sure you're paying attention to to that. Yeah, I would uh, say Matt Breda is is another guy that is virtually a must pick up with what's been going on with Carlos I, Hyde. I still think that he's just a handcuff, though. I think he's the backup. I agree, but the difference in why I'm saying he's more of a must pickup is because Carlos Hyde is currently dealing with injury sure. and is always dealing with injury. So his path towards relevance seems much easier and obvious than say Austin Eckler, who is the new handcuff for Melvin Gordon. It's going to take a complete injury to Melvin Gordon, who we haven't, you know, he, I guess he got injured late last year, but he doesn't have that label as an injury which is weird cuz he's never finished a season Melvin Gordon Melvin Gordon's never finished a season Correct. Are you going back in college I'm talking about pros Oh well he's in his like third year and just saying he it's missed three games last year Yeah but I I'm just saying that it's weird that these running backs they miss they they go season ending surgery with three or four games left and they get labeled injury prone but now Melvin Gordon has somehow has escaped that I guess because his fantasy production was so high. I think it's last because year. of the injury. It depends on what the injury is, sure. whether you're injury prone or what. You know, nobody can avoid you know tearing an ACL. Whether well, so like you're Keenan Allen has been was labeled injury prone. He but got Keenan Allen's been injured by like thirty different things. That that's what I'm saying. Is like all right, si similar to Carlos Hyde. It's is it your is it your hamstring? Is it your knee? Is it your uh, kidney? You know, kidney. <laughs> In like your heart. Heart, like Keenan Allen. Well, and Jason, you're talking about Matt Bereda. I mean, he already out snapped Hyde last week. Yes, right. Yeah, because so. Hyde was dealing with the injury, alleged or allegedly that Bereda had the hot hand. Moving to the tight end position, make sure you check for Evan Ingram. He, but, oh, but Mike. Yes, voice of public opinion. Evan Ingram had all the opportunity in a great matchup last week, and he got a goose egg. Yes, he did. He had, and I played him. You know what, voice of public opinion, I played him too, and he cost me a matchup that was near and dear to my heart. I lost because of him, but I will continue to play him. His opportunity has to go up, and I, I, have, a, I have no explanation for the goose egg right now. Also do a, a quick peek for Cameron Brayton, but I, he's probably owned in your league. Yeah, I, I'm 
not as sold on Evan Ingram. I realized that the targets had been there and they need him, but again, with the bad schedule coming up, the fact that he is still a rookie, I don't want to, you know, take the, the few games that he put together where he had targets and somewhat, you know, he, he was relevant. But it wasn't like he was lighting the world on fire and became this must start tight end. Now he's got because no, there's there's two of those guys. Sure, but so he's a playing, must start. But my point is, you're playing matchups with him, right? Uh huh. The matchups aren't good. the The Denver Broncos are a a positive matchup for tight ends. I mean, they're giving up almost ten points a game. Uh, all right. Well, we'll agree you're to looking, disagree on on Ingram. <laughs> I'm just telling what the what the actual numbers say. The Broncos will be a top ten play for tight ends. All right, because the corners are so good that they here's that a tight end that's available in the more here, a tight end that's available in more leagues. That I would much rather have Austin Sferian. You'd Jacobs. rather have him than Evan Ingram. Yes, I would rather have Austin Sferian Jenkins. Interesting. Please explain yourself. Austin Sferian Jenkins is basically the number one target for the Jets. Yes. You've got a quarterback who has used the tight end before in Josh McCown. Uh, while he's been out there, he's been getting more and more involved. Last week, five for 68 and a touchdown on nine. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That You're was looking at the wrong stat six, line. Six for 29 there you go. and a touchdown on eight targets. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I trust him more. And, I, you know, you've, you've got a better schedule coming up. I would rather have ASJ. All right. George Kittle. San Francisco 49ers put up a nice line. He's flashed a little bit. He's been inconsistent, but all tight ends have been inconsistent. Colby Fleener, available in over half of leagues. He's coming off of the bye week. I say you pick him up. I say you play him. Mm. I mean, maybe we're talking recency bias, but I saw Ed Dixon drop almost two bills on the Detroit Lions, and oh, Colby Fleener gets to play. The Detroit Lions. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't hate that at all because, mo like you said, the majority of tight ends you're grabbing, almost all of them, their floor is zero. It, you know, <laughs> it's like no no one's assured of, of even two points. Uh, exhibit Evan Ingram, exhibit Hunter Henry. I mean, right. you, you, and your upside is really going to be, oh, good, he got six points or he got a touchdown. And if you're talking about a tight end that's got the opportunity to get touchdowns, Kobe Fleener with Drew Brees coming off a bye, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't mind that at all. The aforementioned Ed Dixon, are you buying in to the point that you're going to pick him? You're a Charles Clay owner. You're trying to grab some tight ends. And yeah, you're I, stuck with Ed Dixon. You pick him up. Yeah, I think, I think you could pick him up, but he is far less likely to get a touchdown. I mean, you you compare him to Kobe Fleener. I feel like what you're doing is you're saying, okay, Ed Dixon. He's probably going to get me five, six points. Ugh. I, it's all, I mean, it's better than a lot of the tight ends out there, but it's irrelevant. I mean, so I guess, I guess I'm, I'm talking myself out of Ed Dixon the more that I think about it because I, I want that. <laughs> That's what we're here to do. I want the touchdown upside. If all of these guys are going to suck, who cares if I get the 45 yards or the uh, zero yards? I'm I mean, interested that, those, in 45 those points, yards. Those points matter. I don't, I don't want to, you know, say, look, four and a half points, you're going to win or lose a game a lot of times on that. But I, I would much rather have the guy that I think has an opportunity this week for a touchdown. And so, you know, I, I, I agree. I think that Fleener would be a, f a far better option. All right. Let's say you have lost Clay. These are your options to pick up. You got George Kittle, Ed Dixon, Ryan Griffin, or the new Mr. Very Necessary, which – I guess you kind of rule him out because he is on bye this week. Nick O'Leary, the replacement for the Buffalo Bills. So I'll I'll take him out, uh, either, even though he's worth taking a look at to possibly stash. So Ryan Griffin, Ed Dixon, George Kittle, because those are very low-owned tight ends. Yeah, Ryan Griffin's up? got a great matchup against Cleveland. He does. Um, or, you know what, I'm going to throw this name in there too. Zach Miller. Oh, I, I would probably go Zach Miller. Uh, I don't love the matchup against Baltimore, um, so that that if it's a one week thing, then I would I would actually probably go George Kittle. But I think Zach Miller is going to be pretty good the rest of the season. in In the landscape of tight ends, uh, he's probably like uh, you know a top six or seven guy, which is gross because he's not that good. <laughs> 
I actually think he's a talented tight end. He just has been very, very hurt. I mean, you talking about he's an injury prone player. Yeah. Hey, Brooks, Nick O'Leary. That that is a name that we need to make sure we have in this next show week? next week because he will be a great pickup. But you just don't need to pick him up now. Nobody's fighting for Nick O'Leary. Most people don't know who he is, and he's on by. So don't pick him up now. But people need to know who Mr. Very Necessary is. He's very necessary. Very <laughs> necessary. There's no one else to throw the ball to. Defensive streamers. Washington gets to take on the 49ers. The Rams taking on Jacksonville. Oh, I like that. They get to take on the 49ers. Exactly. And it's my, Christmas. My, my, my personal favorite this week, Atlanta taking on the Dolphins, coming off of the bye week. Miami is just absolute flaming garbage. They are a flaming baby diaper at yeah. this moment. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be – they are they are one of my favorite this week as well. The Falcons? Off the bye, at home, um, they get half of Jay Cutler and half of Matt Moore. So that's going to be great. <laughs> sure. And moving to kicker, which we don't usually recommend picking up a kicker, but check for Will Lutz and yes. check for Matt Bryant. Whenever you've got those bye week guys, you, you know, you, you go through the waivers. You don't even look at kickers because – you just don't care. Maybe you've got a decent one. You know, you've got a guy on your team that's been okay, so you stop looking at the weekly matchups. You don't realize that guys like Will Lutz and Matt Bryant were dropped because they were on bye week. Pick them up. All right, let's talk some quarterback streamers. Full stream ahead. I'll let you kick this one off. All okay. right. Well, look, I hate it and I love it. I hate going back to the well. I feel like it's the cheap. What, here's the thing about the well, though. The well is full of water. Right, Life-giving Life -giving water. water. There's Why would you ever not want to go to the well? It's like, I went to the well yesterday. Well, guess what? You want to stay alive. Your body. You want to win. Your body's like, what, this I don't know, 70% water. You need still water. Still available in the majority of leagues, despite the fact that the last four weeks, the last month of games – in six point per passing touchdowns, he hasn't had less than 20 points in any of those matchups. In fact, the lowest yardage he's thrown was this past week with 291. It's Carson Palmer, who's going to be at home against Tampa Bay, whose defense is just completely injured right now. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're missing all of their most relevant pieces. And now they've got this awesome running game with, <laughs> with a Hall of Famer. So big boost. Uh, I, I think Carson Palmer is a is the, a absolutely the return start. of John Brown. John Brown being healthy makes a huge difference. In fact, all their weapons are starting to get a little bit healthier. I, I love Carson Palmer this week at home against Tampa Bay. Jason, I have a question for you. All right. Hey, where's the beef? <laughs> <laughs> where's the beef, Jason? <laughs> where's the beef? Well, hey, where's the beef? <laughs> I'm going with Jacoby Beef Brisket Brissett coming off a strong game. He gets to take on the Tennessee Titans. They're giving up the third most fantasy points to the quarterback position. You saw new life for T.Y. Hilton able to go deep. It will not shock me if we see a somewhat repeat performance from T.Y. Hilton this year. He's mobile. This week? Yeah, so this week he's mobile. He's a, a competent quarterback, especially when he's in a good matchup. And this is a great matchup. You gotta play that drop one more time. <laughs> hey, where's the Wait, wait, wait. Hey, where's the beat? <laughs> the 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 horn <laughs> in the background is my favorite part. <laughs> fong, fong, fong. Hey, where's the beef? All, All right. right. All <laughs> Those right. There, are there, there's some other options too available. There's a lot of really good options this I mean, week. Josh McCown versus the Patriots. Case Keenum gets to take on the Packers. Are you do you have interest in Kevin Hogan against the Texans? No. No, I, I realize the Texans' defense is a little depleted right now, but they're still a well-coached defense, and also uh, Hogan plays for the Browns. <laughs> this, is, this is your go-to analysis? It's, look, it's when when it's right, it's right. Brian Hoyer coming off a strong game, playing Washington. I don't, I don't, I don't know mind I would, that one. Yeah, I don't if Josh it, Norman is out, which that, yeah, I, I, believe, I had forgot that, which yes. I believe he will probably be out, then I think Brian Hoyer is, is a fine play. I mean – Look, he's he's five weeks in. He's got three really bad games against three 
amazingly good defenses, and he's got two really good games against mediocre defenses. So yep. Washington without Josh Norman is a mediocre defense. I think you could play Brian Hoyer. And uh, Andy, Andy brought his stream of the week. I thought you were going with Jay, Jay oh, Grizz. Jay, Jay Grizz. Well, Jay Grizz's stream is going to be Trubisky. Trubisky, I mean, you every know week, that. yeah. Uh, Andy's stream of the week is going to be uh, Jared Goff plays the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are, you know, terrible mm -hmm. defense. <laughs> No, I'm. Are I, you just bodying him right now? Yes, no, this is not like, real. Did Andy he did send not. That note? No, Andy did not send that in. Don't play Jared Goff this week. He's looking good. <laughs> I was giving him some props around the studio this morning, but no, do not play Jared Goff against the Jaguars, who are destroying people right like, now. I'd rather take an ice bath <laughs> than play Jared Goff right now. Yeah. Well, America, we did it. We made it through two shows without Andy Holloway. Tomorrow's mailbag. So oh, get your questions in, and yeah. we're gonna go crazy. Absolutely. Draft.com slash ballers for DFS this weekend. See you tomorrow, Bookman. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.